In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, God's good people, and welcome. This is Catholic Meditation with me, Father Blessed Ambang Njume. Today is Wednesday, the 20th of March, 2019. We thank God for the gift of life. We thank Him for bringing us to this new day. Thanks for joining us. Let us pray. Keep your family, O Lord, schooled always in good works, and so comfort them with your protection here as to lead them graciously to gifts on high. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Today's first reading is taken from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 18, verses 18 to 20. The gospel is taken from St. Matthew, chapter 20, verses 17 to 28. I read from the first reading. Come on, they said, let us concoct a plot against Jeremiah, for the law will not perish for lack of priests, nor advice for lack of wise men, nor the word for lack of prophets. Come on, let us slander him and pay no attention to anything he says. Pay attention to me, Yahweh, hear what my adversaries are saying. Should evil be returned for good? Now they are digging a pit for me. Remember how I pleaded before you and spoke good of them to turn your retribution away from them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bring your haters to God. Bring your haters to God. Beloved in the Lord, one very bitter truth about life, one cruel reality you would have realized is the fact that no one will ever be loved by all. It does not depend on you. Even if you are very good, at least one person, one, will just hate you, perhaps because you are good. You may know, or you may not know your haters, but there are some people who hate you. They may hate you for the evil you did to them. They may hate you simply because you are good, and your goodness challenges them. They think you show off or you pretend, or perhaps you are proud. They may hate you because you excel very well, so driven by jealousy, they will hate you. They may hate you because of their biases and preconceptions. They may hate you because others speak well of you and about you. They may hate you because it's always you. Everywhere you go, you shine out. So they ask, why you? And so they think you are claiming or always chosen. They feel you are too proud simply because you do what you do best. They may hate you because you occupy a position they wanted. So beloved, you will never be loved by all. Just get it. 
Not even Jesus was loved by all despite his goodness. But what makes our own even worse is we mostly do not know those who hate us, those who do not wish us well. You may be eating and laughing with the very one who is stabbing you from the back. That is the human being. Some have very perverse minds and hearts. So, beloved, whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, at least one person somewhere hates you, either for the wrong you did or just for the good person that you are. Now, that there would definitely be people who hate us is a given. That should not worry you. But the most important worry is how do we react towards those who hate us? Now, most of those who hate us are unknown. So how do you even react towards those you do not know? Most of those who hate us make themselves unknown to us. Very few are known by us. They are invisible ghosts. That is why we could be playing around with them without even knowing. Very few are mature, I say mature and courageous to hate you and tell you they do and even show you that they hate you. I prefer these ones. They hate you and will tell you. But the majority, over 90%, are those who hate us, yet they play, laugh and eat with us. They pretend and show a good face in front of us, but behind us, they kill us. So how do you handle such invisible persons? Do you go on suspecting everybody and every smile as coming from the enemy? No. You may hurt even those who truly and genuinely love you. So do not stay aloof. Do not frown with everybody, suspecting everybody for hating you. No. You may just be frowning even with those who have genuine love from their hearts of you and for you. So what do we do? Jeremiah, in the first reading of today, laments on this situation. It is understood if people hate us for the evil we did to them. But it is painful, very painful, when people plot evil against you, slander you, plan to pull you down for no reason, repaying your goodness for evil. In the Gospel, Jesus predicts his suffering and death in the hands of his enemies and haters. We see a good man, an outright good man, hated for his goodness. He knew all this, what did he do? In his case, he did not fight them. He did not fight back. While on the cross, he offered up all to God, even his haters. Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. Beloved, we would always be hated. The psalmist of today's gospel, Psalm 31, gives us an answer. Beloved, you cannot fight such haters that you do not even know. And even if you know, the best you can do is offer them to God and entrust yourself to God's guidance and protection. The psalmist says, Lord, to your hands I commit my spirit. My trust is in you. Every moment of my life is in your hands. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies who pursue me. The best way then to treat your haters is to offer them to God. Offer yourself too to God and if God is for you, your haters could be as many as the whole world, but they can never overpower you. They can never overthrow you. This day, Lord, we bring all those who hate us to you. Even if it is I who am among those who hate others, I bring myself to you. Touch the hearts of haters. Protect and guide the hated. We pray for a conversion of heart for those who hate others for whatever reason. And for those who are hated, commit yourself to God and His protection. Only He can save and protect you from the snares of those who seek to destroy you. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come on you and remain with you forever. Amen. <laughs>